Hello and welcome to the TTI Distribution Download, the podcast where we talk about all things happening in the world of electronic components with the specialists of TTI. Thanks, Jim. Hey, everybody, and thanks for plugging into the TTI Distribution Download. I'm Steve Verhoski, and I'm a Connector Business Development Manager at TTI, and I've been in the electronic industry for over 30 years, four of them here at TTI. In this episode, we're welcoming my colleague, Gia Hayes, Vice President of Military Aerospace at TTI, and Stephanie Fritz, Senior Marketing Manager. And today's topic is going to be high-speed VPX switches and their place in the Vita or SOSA ecosystem. So before we begin, I'm going to introduce Gia and Stephanie to the audience. And Gia, would you mind walking us through a little bit about your experience here at TTI and in the industry? Sure, Steve. Thank you. I have been in distribution for roughly 25 years, and I've been working with Amphenol for more than half of that. So I'm really looking forward to our discussion today. And Stephanie, why don't you tell us a little bit about you? Sure. Thank you. And thanks for having me on today. Um, So I'm Stephanie Fritz. I'm the Senior Marketing Manager, as you said, of Amphenol Military High Speed. And though I haven't been with Amphenol all that long, only about two years, I know that our history with TTI goes back way further than that. And uh, we always look forward to the business that we do and the partnerships we have with our customers through you. So um, thanks for having me on. I'm looking forward to talking more. Well, thank you for the kind words. And we echo those. We, We have a very uh, strong relationship with Amphenol overall and with Amphenol Aerospace uh, more specifically. So once, why don't we go ahead and jump into the subject matter here on the VPX switches. And uh, Gia, why don't you start things off? Thank you, Stephanie. We appreciate the partnership as well. Let's start with a simple question or what seems to be a simple question. Why VPX switches, especially from a connector company? Good question. And um, as you said, it doesn't. it's not as simple as it might seem at first. So I'll answer it in two parts. First, why VPX? Uh, In traffic on TTI's site recently, I I would imagine there's been an increased interest in Vita and Sosa and those open source kind of solutions. And I know interoperability uh, is becoming a buzzword in the industry and more and more companies are hopping on that bandwagon. Well, we have been on board for that for a while. Vita 46 is the spec for the VPX connector system that makes up the wafers on the end of our VPX switches. So why VPX? That's the way the world is going, the open source. Why switches? I'm I'm sure that I'm not going to do this story justice compared to Jared Sabreba, our GM's telling of it. But many years ago, when Military High Speed was just a product line within Amphenol Aerospace instead of being its own full business unit, Jared decided the world needed switches and media converters. He saw where demand was headed in this high speed product. And he's always been good at teasing out the customer needs. And he found that they had gaps in their technology that needed media converters. They had high speed Ethernet operations that needed rugged switches, and he knew that his products would make up the heart of those. So despite the naysayers and the long hours and the uphill battles, he started those product lines, and that's how Amphenol Military High Speed became what it is today. But switches and media converters and the VPX ones were really the the root of that. So the rest, they say, is history. Now we're hundreds of part numbers and thousands of units later, but switches and VPX switches specifically have um, have really been the, the taking off point for us um, in the last year or two. Very cool. Thanks for walking us through that history, Stephanie. I appreciate that. So what would be some of the features that make this uh, these switches Vita 46 compliant? So the Vita 46 standard uh, documents various elements that are that need that are mandatory um, or optional to be in compliance with the spec. So in general, to be compliant, the connectors have to Uh, have a mechanical form factor, including keying and alignment mechanisms. They have to have certain signal and power ratings, including the location of the power rails, utility signals, uh, system management signals, and non-volatile and uh, NVMRO signals. Uh, Connector pin definitions and pin mapping per the Vita 46 spec. So these are these are some of the things that make it Vita 46 compliant. And this applies to our 3U VPX modules, the 6U VPX modules, and back. And Stephanie, is this your only VPX product? Nope. Um, so Amphenol Aerospace Operations, AAO, our, our sister division, they have the VPX connectors as one of their product lines. And we those are those wafers that I talked about on the ends of our switches. So those go into um, backplanes, they go into switches, they go into um, development chassis. And we at high speed have dozens of variations of the 3U and 6U VPX switches, media converters, and they all use those connectors. 
Um, some of the switches are quick boot in under eight seconds. Some have regular copper backplane as well as fiber connections. Um, some are extremely high channel count, some are low power, some have the, the TSN MaxSec firmware. So we have, we have lots of VPX options. And the one that TTI has in stock is our, our 024, so the, the last three digits of our, our part number there, the 024 variety, which has 32 ports of 10G copper, 10 gigabit per second copper on the back and 16 ports on the front or the top, as we call it, um, for a total of 48 ports, each going 10 gigabits per second. Um, and then I mentioned our development chassis. We have El Charco and the Croc that every Vita 46 lab needs. That's how you, um, you know, you plug your VPX switches and media converters into that uh, for debugging, troubleshooting, and testing. All right, one more. We also have RTMs, the rear transition modules, also using those VPX. And that's how you break out those, those 48 ports that I said. When you're doing um, testing and debugging and all of that, you need to be able to access all those different ports. So the RTMs break it out into a backplane of those different protocols or connections. And no optical switching, or do you have, do we, or is there an optical switch that you guys have as well? Yes, yes, we have um, optical switches as well. Um, we have an incredible collection of transceivers of optical transceivers that are kind of the, the secret sauce between our fiber optics. So we have one of our switches actually that has fiber connections off, we can call it again, off the top. Um, so you're able to, to plug an MT ferrule directly into those. So you have your VPX copper in the back and you have, um, you know, sticking out of your chassis accessible right on the end there. Um, you can plug your MT ferrules right into the fiber there. So that's great information that you've shared, Stephanie. So what would be some applications for these VPX switches? Anything rugged, really. Uh, so they're used in all kinds of rugged applications. Most often, I can't even say that anymore. They're, they are often used in avionics for radar, but also one of our biggest ones has been uh, their use in torpedoes and shipboard applications. Um, tanks, if it's, if honestly, if it's, if it's military, we probably have a switch on it. Those applications definitely cover a lot of our customer base because aerospace and defense is a big portion of our business. So tell us this, how is your switch different from others? Oh gosh, so many things, um, which is funny to say for an open source spec where we're you know following a, a formula, but one way is what, what I call the Jared Sabrave special. So I mentioned that we can have some copper ports off the top or on the front. And that's that's the Jared Sabreva special. It's convenient for debugging because you can be plugged into a development chassis or plugged into the final chassis and you still have access to ports off the top, as we say. So it opens up real estate at the top of the box for use in an area that might otherwise have been considered unusable. But even beyond debugging, if you um, if you're if you're clipping into those, then you can have space for cables at the top of a chassis. So most people that are designing VPX chassis, they're stuffing everything into the bottom, into the back plane. But now the the Jared Sabreva special off the top lets them use that space up top. Another way is our transceivers, um, because some of our switches have fiber optics. The transceivers that we use are Amphenol products and are incredible workhorses. They are the secret sauce. Um, behind a lot of our switches, really, really high quality performance. And I'm not just saying that because they're Amphenols. Uh, they are really, really fantastic. Um, another is our technology. Not everyone can say that they are always on the cutting edge with TSN and MaxSec uh, for firmware or with the lowest power and quickest boot on the market or a 901D shock qualified unit for shipboard applications. Side note, you know, they call that test like the hammer. It like it cleans the clock of those switches and it this it just it's fantastic. We passed it anyway. Um, and that's just in our VPX switches. So for our standalone switches, the list just keeps going on. It, it, it really it's incredible, um, which brings me to the final way our switches are special. We we don't say no to customers. Jared actually has a rule that you are not a, you do not have permission to say no to a customer without talking to him first. Um, we don't. Yeah, we don't we don't try to pack everyone into this pre-designed box where it's our way or the highway. We are always, always challenging ourselves, our engineers, our factory, our fantastic TTI partners. And I feel like we've got some really good credentials to show for it. So, Stephanie, how can anyone from our audience find these switches or inquire about possible custom builds now that you mentioned you do a lot of that type of work? 
Oh, yes. So I mentioned that TTI stocks our 024 variety. So that's CF-020-400-024. That's our 48 channel, 48 port at 10 gigabits per second copper. Uh, for any of the others or a brand new variation of their own creation, call us or let TTI know. Um, I'm sure that, uh, you know, I, I like I said before, I can unironically and not just for this podcast say, TTI, you all are one of our best and closest distribution partners, and we are glad to work with you and thankful for the way that that you support our customers. Um, so, you know, any of the contact information that they can get at the end of this podcast or reaching out through the website um, or the stock that TTI has. Well, the feelings are mutual. It, it truly is a partnership that we have with Amphenol. Obviously, in Jia's area of responsibility, you play a vital role in servicing our collective customer base. So we appreciate the support. We appreciate the enthusiasm that people like you bring to our relationship, helping our customers understand more fully in the audience to listening today what you have in this realm because people may not associate you, Amphenol, military, high speed, with the switching part of the operation. They would think of you perhaps more in the, in the just the connector portion of it. So appreciate you walking us through that. I want to thank you and thank Gia as well for joining me today and discussing high-speed VPX switches with the audience. We look forward to future episodes with Amphenol Aerospace and Military on innovative products to support the leading-edge designs. And thank you, listeners, for plugging in with us today. And please tune in again for our next distribution download. That's it for this episode of the TTI Distribution Download. For more information on any of the topics you heard about today, reach out to your nearby TTI branch at 1-800-CALL-TTI or visit us online at tti.com.